that we have here, can we target the goal here, here, targets at the end. And these guys here, they work as a team. But the guys in the centre can't shoot. They can only play it with one side or the other who can shoot to the target. I guarantee you, if you get your kids playing this, or get your seniors or your kids playing this, it makes no difference. It's an absolutely incredible game. We have this on the website. We actually do it in one on the inside. But it's a fantastic game because they can play with, the, with their side there or there. These are the only guys that can shoot to the target. And it's very thought provoking. And it's very fast. You have to be quick. You have to think and literally think in your feet here and think quickly. They are either side, but only the people in the end zones can shoot. But these are the type of games that. <coughs> This is a full, uh, full, full game, one pitch, one goal post. Both shooting into the goal post. Goalkeeper, you play this way, you play that way. Now, what happens? These guys shoot, the X's are attacking, they shoot. And the O's get it. Whoever wins the ball have to take it over the end line and walk it back. And of course, what will start to happen when they start to learn this game, they'll all start to walk back together to take the ball to give. But they get, eventually, again, they get smart and they get clever. And one person will walk back and the other person will fit into position so there's a, a foot pass, a 30 40 yard foot pass. So they're learning to play long, play short, play long, play a tight game, play a long game. Another string to their board. They're learning all aspects of the game. Play short, play long, and scoring on both sides. But these are the type of games that you know that all of your coaches will come up with, and they're common. The games will be common, and there'll be an understanding exactly of what capacity is what you're exactly you're trying to develop. In the game. Uh, yeah, I'd say you're all fairly familiar with that. That was where we spent a good bit of time and we spent you. <coughs> now we were unlucky in that that place was about, I went to the Christian Brothers School and the handball alley was about 200 yards away from the Christian Brothers School. So most of the times when we were there when we were supposed to be in school, we had to have a lookout. <laughs> and we were like rats at a crossroad to tell you the truth and show me a shout, Brother McQuillan is coming out of here. Do you all recognize the handball alley? Does any of you recognize this? Or this? Well, that to me was John Donovan. And that was Noel Jeremy. And they nearly killed him several times. Because when you miss those, you were lucky. And our time was spent in the handball alley, literally. Now they call it visualization. We take it off the back wall, we beat Noel Tierney and we come back and we beat John Donnell and we put it in the left corner and we put it in the right corner. And we might hand pass it off the sidewalk. And we spend all over here just practicing the speed. All in all practicing the speed. And now we have wall ball. And it's coming back again. We have to... well, unfortunately, a lot of the handball alleys were demolished. And now they're on the way back in the form of wall ball. Watch the kids there last night, all practice them up against the wall. But they were our skills test. We now have UCAN awards. You're probably familiar with the UCAN awards. And I suppose the best thing about the UCAN awards is this. Kids, which is what lots of people know. When kids are learning, they're learning commensurate, I suppose, with their self-esteem. And this is a fantastic game for that. Because they can measure their progress. They know the number of times. And that's what I find fantastic about the UCAN Awards and about the skill staff. You test them at the beginning of the year. You test them in mid-season, you test them in mid-season. And they can actually see the physical improvement themselves. And even if it's only one ball, or 1%, or 2%, it's very meaningful. 
we have drawn up a battery of tests at home, and you can get it off the website, you know, that are very simple, they're easy to carry out, but they're very, they're, they're absolutely, to my mind, they're essential for self-development for the kids themselves. <coughs> we, the Respect Initiative, I suppose, that's a, there's a power, very powerful message there, I think, in between the two forces. And I think it was probably late in my career that we had a guy by the name of Jack Mann. I don't know that he was chairman of the football board and we talked about the Respect Initiative. We were really trying to promote the Respect Initiative. We put a lot of time, we put a lot of energy into promoting the Respect Initiative at home at the moment. Uh, and we have to start the early because if you want to change behaviour, education is the process through which we can do this. And we have a lot of good stuff on our website at the moment nationally. Very simple actions, very simple practices to, respond to, 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 to develop the respect initiative. Because I think what we must all realize is the opposition bring up the testing. I was saying that to the kids last night. It's not the worst of us. The opposition should also bring up the testing. So I just referred to Jack Mann a couple of moments ago. Jack was the chairman of the county board of God when we were playing. I remember one time, it depends on which side of the county you live. I was living in the Toward the Mayo Bar, right? So, of course, desperate rivalry between us and Mayo. They were the enemy. Oh, we hated Mayo. The other counties weren't too bad, and vice versa, they hated us. But I remember we were after being beaten by Mayo one time, and we were in Castle Bar. We came back to the Travellers Wind in one of those hotels, and Jack was the chairman at the time. And we were sitting down in depression, and he turned around to a couple and said, Lads, he said, What will we do? We said, It was no Mayo. <laughs> Couldn't have strangled us. Of course, he was right. What would we do? At club level, what would you do if you didn't have the opposition? They're stretchers. They're testers. They bring the best out of you. And that's what we want to do. We want to ensure that every one of our kids and every one of our players, ultimately every one of our teams, become the best. And the only way they can become the best is by respecting the opposition. I went to college in the early 70s. And there was a guy, a boxer, who went to college for First name was Gully, right? And he used to box. The, the, the best team to make in college in our time was the boxing team. Because you were guaranteed a trip away. The university tournament that took place in Leeds or Liverpool or something like that. And it was easy enough to get. It. But this guy, Gully, I think he boxed on the paperweight team. <coughs> it was about six to one. But there was a competition for him. And every year he won the Irish Championship. He never got into the fight. When they got to Gully's way, Gully wins again. So in his second year anyway, the interversities were in bath. In bath. <coughs> so Gully went to bath. He came back from bath and about the Tuesday. I said, well, Gully, it'll be a time for terrible trophy. I said, what happened? He says, they found an opponent. How <laughs> long did that? 30 seconds, he says. I spent the weekend in hospital. <laughs> the boys had to pick him up. Back to it, again, go back to the same thing. You know, I keep going back to the fundamentals and the rationale as to why we play the game. Because we weren't going to learn control, we want to learn discipline. We want to meet people, we want to learn cooperation. It goes back to the fundamental principles of why do we want our players to play the game. And you know, I have to say in today's environment they often say sometimes I wish some of our senior intercounty players would sit down look into the mirror and have a chat with themselves and say, why am I playing this game? Because sometimes I hear a lot of, you know, I so, it's too much time and, you know, I haven't got the time and I'm not getting anything out of it and the gee, I'm not really doing anything for me. I just need to think you need to take a pull of the reins, look in the mirror and say, is this the game for me? And I also think as administrators and our coaches, we need to look every so often, we need to follow the reins as well and look at ourselves. What am I coaching? Am I taking ownership of this? Am I coaching for my reasons or for their reasons? Very often, I often think sometimes what we should do is, and again, as part of your group and your coaches, when they sit down and you should say, listen, what are my expectations? 